Global fisheries are now more important than ever. With rapidly increasing populations, the pressure on our wild fish stocks are the highest they've ever been in human history. In 2016, the global tuna trade contributed to over 42 billion US dollars, over 5 million metric tons caught and exported around the world, making it one of the most economically profitable fisheries for many countries. But with global increasing population rates and global warming, sustaining the human population is a problem that our generation needs to find a solution for to prevent further exploitation of our current marine resources. By combining current commercial fisheries data with optical and remote sensing tools and climate change models, this video will provide a hypothetical assessment of future fisheries productivity into 2100. This will highlight global shifts in marine productivity, allowing governments and industries to expand into the future to ensure the sustainability of marine environments. Over the last two decades, scientists have been able to use enhanced remote sensing tools such as the Sea Viewing Wide Field of View Sensor or SeaWIFs attached to satellites to provide day-to-day -day quantification of global chlorophyll concentrations, which has been shown to be highly associated with fishery yields in a study conducted by Friedlands in 2012. Chlorophyll A is produced by phytoplankton, which can be classed into four different functional groups, cyanobacteria, diatoms, dinoflagellates, and coccolithophores, all of which provide their own unique ecosystem service for fisheries around the world. Today we will focus on cyanobacteria and diatoms as we believe they will play the biggest impact into fisheries productivity into the future. Cyanobacteria are photosynthetic prokaryotes that are essential for fisheries productivity as they are able to exploit warm oligotrophic waters providing essential net primary production in tropical oceans. Prochlorococcus and Sinecococcus are the two most abundant genera of cyanobacteria and contribute to the majority of marine productivity in our oceans. Diatoms are single-celled eukaryotes surrounded by a silica cell wall. They are responsible for 40% of all marine productivity and are keystone species in all marine trophic networks, fueling zooplankton grazing, allowing energy to be transported from phytoplankton to nectar. The following model shows the current movement patterns for all phytoplankton abundance over time in 2015, showing distinct latitudinal patterns for each different functional group. Cyanobacteria such as Prochlorococcus and Sinecococcus are able to dominate the tropical regions, but are separated by distinct dead zones, restricting further distribution towards the polar regions. Diatom abundance is also heavily restricted to polar latitudes, highlighting a set of niche abiotic conditions that are necessary to sustain diatom communities. By combining current remote sensing data with predicted impacts of climate change through models provided by the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change in 2013, representative concentration pathways 2.6 and 8.5 provide clear insights into how future phytoplankton abundance will be changed in accordance with increasing ocean temperatures. Using current remote sensing data provided by the Ocean Biology and Biochemistry Program from NASA, we can assess the impacts of two key variables of phytoplankton ecosystem service and climate change on future fisheries productivity. Our conceptual model for global fisheries productivity into 2100 show extensive shifts in cyanobacteria and diatom abundance and biogeography within the tropical and polar regions. In the tropics, we have predicted an increase in fisheries productivity as Prochlorococcus has been shown to increase in abundance as they exploit increased available habitat with rising ocean temperatures as shown by Ramsdorf in 1999. 
with other phytoplankton species forced to latitudinally migrate away from this region, fisheries productivity will be heavily dependent on Prochlorococcus primary production to sustain demersal and pelagic species in this region. Within the polar regions, we have predicted a reduction in size of productive fisheries, as diatom biogeography will be heavily impacted by increasing ocean temperatures. Diatom abundance will be heavily concentrated, allowing current fisheries productivity in this region to be sustained, but will be highly vulnerable to disturbance, as they are dependent on cold water currents to sustain current polar trophic networks. With the net reduction of available habitat for phytoplankton species in 2100, zooplankton grazing will be increasingly concentrated within highly productive regions. This change will be strategically important for the commercial fisheries industry as migratory fish such as the Thunus genus will alter migratory patterns to exploit these areas. This will subsequently affect established industries as they will be forced to relocate presenting complex logistical, conservational and legal issues with species now entering new economically exclusive zones. In conclusion, our conceptual model provides a hypothetical bottom-up assessment into global fisheries productivity into 2100. However, it is important to note that our assessment is based on the association between primary production and fishery yields and therefore still requires extensive research showing how climate change will alter fish ecology to provide a true assessment on future fishery yields. With continued proactive research and management efforts, current marine resources can be sustained to mitigate the future impacts of climate change.